Hi, Dr. Jeff Goins here with another Dwarven Tavern Review. We're still working on the player's handbook, a lot of information to get to you. This time we're talking about character classes in part one of this very well organized book. All right. In this section, part one, we have the, the classes as I was talking about in the last video. Now, the way this is laid out, it's laid out pretty much similar. It's very similar to the way the other players' handbooks are laid out with the, uh, with the, the classes listed alphabetically. But it does something cool in that it, uh, right here on the first page, it actually gives a, a summary of what the characters are. Uh, it talks about the barbarian description, a fierce warrior of primitive background who can enter a battle rage. Has a 12-sided hit die. His pri primary ability is strength. Saving throw proficiencies is strength and constitution. And his armor and weapon proficiencies are light and medium armor, shields, simple and martial weapons. Pretty straightforward. Really easy to find out. It's like, what's my hit die? You turn to this page, there you go. Uh, it also includes the bard, the cleric, the druid, the fighter, uh, the monk, one of my favorites, the paladin, uh, Tavernier Lissa's favorite, uh, the ranger, the rogue, the sorcerer, the warlock, and the wizard. Uh, so, as you can see from the, the edition that shall not be named, uh, that excluded the bard, from the first player's handbook, which ticked me off to no end. No end. My rage is still burning over Alpha Centauri. It's gone. Uh, so, anyway, what they have included in this in this book is the Warlock. And uh, the Warlock is incredibly cool in this book. I, I really, really like it. I might roll up a Warlock just for the sake of rolling up one now. The Barbarian, as we can see, is, you know, barbaric, doesn't read or write or whatever. And these new classes, uh, these new, the new class, uh, it's not a new class, but it's a new, in this iteration of the, of the character classes, we have, uh, the level, of course, the proficiency bonus, which I will get to in depth. It covers features, which are, uh, for example, on first level, they get raged, that raged, rage, unarmored defense. They get two rages. It says it right here. Uh, they get rage damage of plus two. Then it goes on to reckless attack, danger sense. At third level, uh, or at second level, at third level is primal path. Fourth level is ability score improvement. Duh, strength, probably. Uh, so we also get, uh, at fifth level, an extra attack, fast movement, sixth level path feature. Okay. And that's where we get to the path features. Now the path features, all classes have uh, a sort of path feature. In this case, the primal path, uh, the, the path that you can choose are, uh, the path of the berserker which, if you may or may not know, the Berserker came from the Norse Bear Sarker, which the Bear Sark is the Sark is the pelt of the bear, and they wore the pelts of the bears and uh, were otherwise naked. Wintertime in Norseland, really, they were tough. And uh, so you've got the uh, path of the Berserker, the path of the Totem Warrior, and... Each one has its own features, like the Berserker gets Frenzy, Mindless Rage, and Intimidating Presence, ultimately. The Totem Warrior gets the Spirit Seeker, the Totem Spirit, the Aspect of the Beast, the Spirit Walker, and a uh, Totemic Attunement. Ta -ta -ta -ta. And that allows for individualization of the class, of the character. And it allows for a lot of uh, very cool customizations, not to mention abilities. And my gaming style is always about, uh, it's always about 
making the character fun and interesting versus a cookie cutter hack and slash min max kind of guy. I don't like that at all. I don't like it when my players do that. I'm, I'm mostly the dungeon manager, but, um, when I have a character, I roll them up just for the, for the fun of the character to see what he can do. And it includes the bard, which has his own abilities laid out very nicely, as you can see here. And then it has uh, the bard's abilities. See, they have their own bardic colleges, which is kind of like the path of the barbarian, where you choose your college, uh, like, you know, NKU. UC, UCLA. I'm not saying no to UCLA. I'm saying that's not what I'm talking about. And that's also the Dwarven Tavern University, which we'll tell you all about that at a later date. Uh, the Cleric is, uh, is a class, as we all have known and love, has his own things. But in this case, the Cleric has been included, and the, the Paladin as well. They have a thing called Channel Divinity. And that channel divinity includes things like turning, rebuking, and destroying undead. And it also gives special abilities um, dependent on the, uh, the divine domain of the cleric. So the divine domains give the cleric special special abilities when channeling divinity, such as knowledge. Through if, if uh, Let's see. If you are in a knowledge domain, one of your channel of divinity abilities is knowledge of the ages, which allows you uh, for 10 minutes, uh, let's see, as an action, you can choose one skill or tool, right? And for 10 minutes, you have proficiency with that skill, which means you can use your proficiency bonus for that skill or tool as if you know it, even if you don't. So it's like you get this divine surge of knowledge and proficiency with a thing or a skill, uh, and, it, and it allows you to do that. And reading thoughts is another channel divinity from the, the knowledge. So each one has its own special channel divinity, which, you know, to me is incredibly cool. And it also goes through nature domains, war domains, etc., etc. Then it has the druid. Now, the druid has druidic spellcasting, of course. Wild shape, druid circles. These are his features as he goes. And the wild shape improvement, ability score improvement, druid circle feature. Uh, then at, uh, let's see, doo -doo 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 -doo. the druid circle is kind of like their path. That's their, that's when they go on to their, their thing. Um, and it allows you to uh, join a circle. And I'm not talking about, you know, Google Plus circles. I'm talking about the powerful, <laughs> like Google's not powerful. Uh, it's got the circle, the Druid circles, a circle of the land, circle of the moon. Um, it has uh, the uh, circle spells that you get, uh, the nature sanctuary, nature's ward. And uh, so you've got the land and the moon, which kind of, you know, it's two different aspects of druid circles. Now, what I would assume is that the druid circles would actually be expanded on, just like all the other paths in future editions, perhaps. That's what I would do. And that's what I would suggest if anyone from Watsi is listening. And uh, I did actually hear that they extensively gleaned their forums for... Uh, suggestions on this edition and listen to the players instead of making, uh, you know, corporate decisions. Uh, then we have the fighter who gets extra attacks, the martial archetype, um, the battle master, the champion, uh, combat maneuvers, which is very cool. Then you've got the monk and uh, the magic of key. And they also have their uh, monastic tradition. So each each class has its its own thing: the way of the shadow, the way of the four elements, etc. And uh, when we return, we'll be talking about the paladin and the rest of the character classes in this dwarven tavern review. 
of Wizards of the Coast Player's Handbook Edition 5. So don't forget to like us. Look us up on Facebook. Give us a like because there's a lot of news and bloggy stuff on, on our Facebook page and, and our web page as well. So subscribe. Give us a like. And thank you for watching. Don't forget to watch these guys, speaking of watching, Watsy, and get your 5th edition player's handbook. It's going to get big stars at the end of these reviews. So, stars, axes. So, don't forget to give these guys a, a holler. Tell them we sent you. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Let the